Welcome back to my animal education channel. Today I'm here at the San Antonio Zoo with Craig. Hello. We're a bit further apart today, but due to safety, that's what we're doing. So today we're talking about the Komodo dragon. To start off, where can you find Komodo dragons in the wild? You can find Komodo dragons in Indonesia. They're found on only five islands in the south central range of Indonesia. And what would these Komodo dragons eat in the wild? Their primary, ho primary prey item is the uh, Timor deer, but they also eat hogs. Uh, they'll eat fish that they forage on the beaches. Uh, they'll even eat uh, some of the uh, large uh, water buffalo there. But the primary prey item is the Timor deer. How do you replicate that uh, diet out in the wild here in captivity? Well, what we like to do is just give them a variety. Uh, we can't give them water buffalo. Um, we really can't give them deer. Uh, but we will give them hogs occasionally, in fact whole hogs where they can really work all their muscles to do what they're made to do, to tear chunks off and so on. It's part of their overall fitness. But we also give them a variety of other items such as rabbits, guinea pigs, uh, chunks of beef, uh, even little treats like uh, hard boiled eggs which is one of our dragon's favorite little treats. And that also helps with enrichment. What other enrichment items do you provide these dragons? Well, one of the main things we do that's enriching is on a daily basis the exhibit they live in outside. It uh, gets a lot of natural wildlife that goes through there. Uh, so between the scent that they leave, uh, sometimes they become prey items. Um, I did have one dragon who, uh, she enjoyed rock squirrels and black vultures. Um, she caught them on her own, so that's very enriching. Uh, but just building a complex exhibit with the landscaping, the topography, the natural wildlife and so on. Uh, that alone gives them enrichment on a daily basis. I saw in the enclosure that you have logs, rocks, and all these sorts of different plants and a nice little pond for them. And as you mentioned, that helps with all the enrichment and everything. So did you take part in building or designing the enclosure? Well, the main part of the exhibit was already built when I got here seven and a half years ago. Um, ponds, some of the uh, topography and so on. Uh, but I got a little bit of a green thumb. I like making pretty exhibit of the plants and the plants also make a complex exhibit for the dragon, so I stuck a lot of things in there, some of the uh, bushes, the ginger, the banana trees, and so on, just kind of added to it, and it's kind of evolving on its own now. Well, it looks really good, and I love seeing a bunch of plants in enclosures. It kind of makes it seem more like the wild, uh, kind of like a little piece of the wild here in Texas. So, how does the heat affect these dragons? Well, uh, heat is, uh, not so uh, great when it's as hot as it has been, uh, but when it comes to dragons, they love it. Um, but just like every other reptile, you gotta give them choice. So uh, as we saw earlier this morning, our female, she was out catching that early morning sun. Uh, she's getting her body systems going, and then she's gonna seek out some shade. Uh, today's temperatures, it's a little hotter than the optimal for dragons, but they're still enjoying it quite a bit. Uh, this is great dragon weather. In fact, San Antonio is probably one of the best places I can think of that's not Indonesia when it comes to keeping your dragons nice and healthy when it comes to temperatures. How does their unique coloration help them in the wild? Well, the coloration, especially as adults, it's kind of a kind of a discreet camouflage. Uh, they lose a lot of their bright orange and yellow that they would have as a juvenile when they hatch. And they, they still have it as an adult, but it dulls out a little bit, becomes more mottled. And this is actually great camouflage because the best thing that they use that for as an adult is going into the forest where there's a lot of shade, a lot of cover, and they lay down and lay still and they look like a log. And that's when their prey item comes by and they think it's just a log, they explode out, grab their prey item and dinner served. Are there any natural predators for these dragons out in the wild? Um, natural predators for dragons, it uh, depends on how old they are or more importantly how big they are. Uh, when dragons hatch out, they hatch out of a nest that's in the ground and the first thing they do is they look to go up. They want to go up and get into the canopy of the trees because they're dinner for a lot of things including other dragons. Now as they grow and get bigger, uh, along with confidence comes size and uh, they start to come down from those trees. They still could fall prey to bigger dragons but as they grow and grow, those predators reduce and next thing you know, they are the apex predator and there's really nothing else out there that wants to dine on them and they kind of reverse fields and prey on everything else. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the Komodo dragon is not only the largest lizard, but also the largest uh, species of monitor lizard. 
Yes, that's correct. They are the largest lizard in the world and, of course, the largest monitor lizard. Uh, there is some confusion about the longest monitor lizard, which is the crocodile monitor, but uh, length and large is two different things when it comes to measuring snakes and, and lizards and so on. Uh, Komodo dragons get a lot bulkier than a crocodile monitor would. Similar to how a reticulated python is the longest snake, but a green anaconda is the bulkiest and the largest snake, so it's very similar to that. I've seen online where Komodo dragons swim between island to island. Is that really a common occurrence or is that just kind of like a rare thing? I'm not sure how common it would be. Uh, it's something that they're very adept at doing. Um, I just don't think it's, uh, pardon the pun, it's been monitored enough to uh, know how frequently they do it, but they are very capable of doing that. How old are the Komodo dragons here at the zoo? Well, we have three adults and three juveniles right now here at the zoo. Uh, the juveniles, they hatched here on Halloween of 2018, so they're about a year and a half old. Um, we have a guest chair from the Houston Zoo for uh, SSP recommended breeding, it's Boga. And if I remember correctly, he is, well, I wanna say he's 16. And Christika, our female, she is nine years old. And then our granddaddy, Bubba, he's uh, 26. He'll be 27 on February 9th. How old do these Kimo dragons typically live? Well, longevity of uh, dragons in captivity, uh, last I saw was 28 and 29. I, I forget what it was male or female, but it's the upper 20s. Now in the wild, that's actually quite the debate going on right now. Uh, a lot of research with uh, uh, mark and recapture and morphology and so on. Uh, they're still looking at the data, but there is some speculation from the uh, researchers down there that male dragons could live into their 50s. That's still yet to be proven out though. If it does be proven to be true, that's a really old lizard. Are Komodo dragons endangered in the wild? Well actually, according to IUCN Red List, they're only considered threatened. However, uh, being found on five, five volcanic islands, um, their usable habitat is the flatter areas. Um, but there's also a lot of uh, topography there. Um, when you think about things such as uh, rising oceans and whatnot, their habitat's imperiled and I think they could quickly uh, raise their uh, ranking and severity really quickly. Are there any organizations currently working to help the Komodo dragons? There's actually one group that is working with Komodo dragons in the wild. Um, they are the only ones under permit. It's the uh, KSP, Komodo Survival Program, and they are actually uh, sponsored a lot by the AZA Species Survival Program for Komodo Dragons. Um, one that San Antonio Zoo is actually very actively uh, working with. Uh, but they've been doing work there, I forget how many years. Um, it's been over 10 years at least. I know I, I was lucky enough to go there in 2015 and work with them, and it's quite a treat. They're doing great work for dragons, getting some great data. And my final question is, what is your favorite thing about Komodo Dragons? My favorite thing about Komodo Dragons, um, the quick and easy answers are so cool. Um, but I, I, I gotta sound more professional here. Um, to me, they're like working with living dinosaurs. And growing up in Wisconsin, we didn't have a lot of reptiles running around, but I had books on dinosaurs. And the next thing I know is there's a living dinosaur called the Komodo Dragon. and so despite being able to work with them on a daily basis, um, I still feel real excited at the fact that I'm just basically taking care of a dinosaur, which comes back to it being really cool. I don't think I could have thought of a better reason. <laughs> you come to work every day and you love it. You get to work with like your childhood like dream. It is just super cool and something I hope to do one day. But thank you so much, Craig, for uh, telling me about the Komodo Dragon. And thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below. Subscribe to my channel. And as always, I'll see you next week.